Veteran actor Tony Plana has starred in more than 60 films, TV shows, and on Broadway. Today on ABC's Ugly Betty. You know how it is. It's, it's, it's difficult to succeed in this business, and it's, and it's uh, particularly difficult if you are a minority and have a minority voice and a minority perspective. As you can see, I've played a lot of different characters, and we'll talk about why I think that is the case. I think I've played every Latino stereotype except for the pregnant teenager. <laughs> but any minute now, I'm ready to go at it. <laughs> Little makeup, long-haired wig. You saw that Mexican guy I played in Three Amigos. I can handle wigs. But Ugly Betty has been an amazing, amazing surprise and a very deeply moving experience for me. It is tackling issues in our society that not only entertains us, teaches us a little bit about who we are. No matter how ugly our experiences have been, they're universal. Everybody has ugly. Everybody. Find ways of expressing the diversity that is you and have them share their diversity to the world. A very diverse, multicultural, complex world. Teaching is often maligned by the fact that it is classified as a service. Ladies and gentlemen, teaching is not a service, it is an art. Kids are walking around with iPods, cell phones, iPhones. You know how difficult it is to detach them from these things and get them to pay attention? Find ways of getting in touch with your own sense of humor. Theater, as an educational tool, will transform your classroom right after it transforms yourself. Lead them the way so they are empowered to do it themselves. It accommodates every type of intelligence, everybody, right brain, left brain, no brain. <laughs> the Beyond Borders program is really about allowing these children to find their own voice. I wouldn't be standing here in front of you if I didn't believe this process is transformational. We started doing theater as an educational tool for language skills, literacy. We're really doing theater as an educational tool for learning language. And I'm not talking about just the immigrants. I'm talking about kids that have been here many generations. And we don't just work with Latinos. In Montebello, we have worked in classes where there are seven different languages, Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese. And I say, baby, mix your media, mix your approaches. We started to develop curriculums that deal with parent orientation and parent advocacy because that's the missing link in education. Certainly, we look at incidents that are life-changing, someone crossing the border, someone's death, you know, disruption in the family, whether it's because of drug abuse or domestic violence, they deal with those issues. You cannot hit them over the head with a textbook and say, learn this language. I mean, my grandmother did that with her slippers. Habla español, cabrón. So let me share a little bit about my immigrant story. Born in Cuba, children did not belong to parents, but they belonged to the state. This was in an intolerable position for my parents. I remember leaving there in 1961. We left because of religious freedom. I used to bring my friends in high school for dinner. They would whisper to me, what was everybody fighting about? I said, they weren't fighting. <laughs> That's how Cubans talk. <laughs> we were welcomed by this country in a way for which I will always be grateful. 